Hey my legion, how y'all doing today? I'm here today to review Manos, the end of the fate. Which was uh, touted as being one of the worst films ever made. Now, I didn't hear about this movie till later on because it faded in obscurity. I mean, growing up, you know, I got a certain age. The one I remember being really, as the worst, uh, touted as the worst movies ever made were like Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, which I'm a, which I'm a huge fan of. Playing Nine from Outer Space, which I'm a, I'm, I'm a decent fan of. Uh, Santa Claus Conquers the Mars, I'm a huge fan of. And also, uh, Bella Ghosty Meets a Brooklyn Grill, which I'm a huge fan of. You know, I didn't see some of those movies until later on. I mean, I didn't see... The only movie I remember seeing earlier on was Attack of Kill Tomatoes because it was on Elvira back in the 80s. And I loved it. I thought it was really funny. And uh, with Manos... And then later on, I remember when I was in the Army, coming home from leave, I think it was in Fort Bragg... And they used to have um, a video rental place right inside Giant Eagle. Cause you, uh, later on, they had like a separate building that had the video rental thing. And I remember renting Troll 2, which became like one of the worst movie nominations, but that came out way later, you know. And I, and I remember, I only saw it the one time. I really enjoyed it, too. Nothing to do with the first Troll film. And then... Uh, of course, uh, the room that came out in two thousand three, which I didn't see till much much later, and that was one of the worst movies I made. But I'm a big fan of that one. I'm a big fan of Troll Two, as well. And it wasn't until much later I heard of Manos Hand of Fate. The kind of, I guess it went into obscurity, and it was directed by this fertilizer salesman that uh, was he. Uh, Won a bet, and he said, like, this guy said he couldn't direct movies, so he decided to raise, I think it raised around $19,000 and made this movie back in 66. And how I found out about it, um, like I said, I'd never heard of it before. I guess in 93, uh, we didn't have Comedy Central at the time on our cable. In 93, they had the Mystery Science Theater 3, uh, Mystery Science Theater. I mean, I remember seeing that show before. I mean, when, on my mom, when I'm at my mom's. She had on Comedy Central. I guess they got a hold of it in 93 and did a bit. And then since then it developed a cult following. I didn't find out about it till, uh, I know my sister gave my dad a, a thing from a movie called Helltown from Alpha Video. And on the video tape after, oh, there was a John Wayne movie. And they have like a little thing that click on the seed uh, catalog. And it was like, you know, you click, and they have like these special like drawings and stuff like that, of full color drawings of these movies covers, and you might see those in some of the other uh, streaming services. So, and there were the covers from Alpha Video, and I saw Mano Santa Fe. And I was like, okay, <clears throat> and I started seeing some articles later on saying it's probably one of the worst movies ever made. Heard a lot about. It. I never bothered to watch it, and then my curiosity got the best of me. I wanted to see if it was on YouTube. And it was, and it was the one on YouTube was a restored version that was done in 2010, which I guess is a much much better and restored and cleaned up version of it. And I watched it last night, and it's uh, it's very entertaining. There's a difference between bad movies that are entertaining and are actually good. I mean, I somebody called so bad it's good movies. That's what some people say. And then I know Howie Cat said. He didn't like that term. He liked calling it like guilty pleasure and stuff. And then there's a difference between bad movies that suck, that are really terrible, like Creep Show 3, or Willie Mel's Curse of the Zodiac, which is unwatchable and gave me a headache. Now, this movie didn't give me a headache. It's very bizarre. It's like a bizarre avant garde type film about like this family. And the guy who directed, I'll start it. Uh, I, for the life of me, I, his name escapes me. Damn it, I can't remember his name. Harold P. Warren. Who I guess in the documentary said he was a pain in the butt to work with. He wanted to direct it, start, and produce it, and stuff like that. And he was uh, like the dad, and he had the father, uh, husband and wife, and the kid, and the dog in the background. And they were looking for this one place, and they, they come across... Uh, well, there's other stuff in the movie. They come across this uh, house. 
and uh, said, it's getting dark, I don't, we need to go, and it was perfectly light out. And he said, we need to go, and there was this one crazy guy named Torgo, I said, oh, I'm Torgo, and he had like this really weird walk. You know, I, I assume he must be like a hunchback type, he usually have a, but he had like this weird drunken shuffle, really bizarre, and he would like try to touch the girl's hair, and he'd be like this, like that. It was really, really very weird, and uh, but funny. And he said, well, the master doesn't want you to stay and be here and stuff. And then they, he ended up, they ended up staying there. And you find the master, and there was this guy, I thought that was Manos, but I guess not. And they were like uh, this cult, and he'd worship this devil they called Manos, hands and face. That's what, I mean, that's the unseen thing. I thought the guy, the master was Manos, but he, he wasn't. And uh, he had these brides, and he'd come out. Come awake at night, and the brides come out. And all the brides did, you know, that were there. He had like six brides, and then they uh, all they did was like fight, uh, argue, and fight. And then he had, when they were at the house, they show like this painting of the master and the dog. And I guess the guy that played uh, the master, what was his name? I can't. Tom Naiman. It actually did the uh, painting, and the painting was actually really good. I mean, the painting was cool, and he had like this big costume that looked like a big like robe, black and, and red, and there was like two big hands that were red in the front, and that was actually pretty cool. I think that he did a good job on that. Tom David did a good job, and also the painting that was probably the two best things in the movie. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give away too much more. It's seventy minutes. It's on YouTube. Um, is it one of my favorite bad movies? No. Um, it doesn't really... Because uh, some of these other movies I've seen, like Tags, I watched a few times. Does it? Do I really want to see it a second time? Probably not. I don't think it has enough going for it. I mean, in the movie, but it's very, very entertaining, though. I did like the movie. Um, and it said, like, a lot of people didn't... Uh, the only people that got paid was uh, the little girl who got, like, a bicycle from it and, like, the family dog who got, like, a bunch of dog food. And that's it. Everyone else was promised these percentages. And I guess the movie didn't break even and it didn't find its audience until way later. And there's a documentary I saw called Hotel Torgo, which is really good. It's like 27. And they talked to one of the guys that said it was the guy that was making out with this girl all the time in the car. Um... The movie has its laughs. It, it was funny and entertaining and watch, but, but, but I don't think it's it, it, quite entertaining enough to bear a second repeating. I found the girl, Jackie Ray Name, and she's on Facebook. I just sent her a friend request. That'd be kind of cool. I sent her this. But I mean, I did like the movie. Uh, you know, and I sound terrible once again with my cold and stuff. I feel a lot better, but just the voice and the congestion, you know. But I give it a well, after seeing a document, I give it a seven out of ten. I mean, I don't know if it really bears a second viewing. Maybe, but as of right now, I don't know. But it's not horrible. Like I said, I saw Curse of the Zodiac, which is dreadful. I mean, there's a difference. I mean, some people don't understand. It's a bad movie. Why do you want to watch? So these movies are entertaining, and it was entertaining. And it had some laughs in it. Ah, uh, whereas. A boring film, or a film that's really, really bad, or it gives you a headache, or, you know, that's different. That's a movie that sucks. You know, you have to know the correlation. But I did like Manos and the Fate. I'm glad I saw it. Like I said, you can see it on YouTube, and also the documentary Hotel Torgo's on YouTube, too. So I hope you liked this real Manos and the Fate, and uh, I think that's about it. Uh, Oh, the one thing I thought was messed well, there's a couple things. The one thing that at the end was messed up, I don't want to give it as a spoiler, but, I mean, I think the one thing was messed up, they had, like, the credits. And they had, like, the actors. And they had, like, you know, and they're all, like, you can read what it was, and then it says, and then it says, also starring, and they had, like, little teeny tiny print for about, like, six people. I don't think that was kind of messed up, because, I mean, everyone else had big... Easy to retell, but these, like, six people had, like, little teeny tiny thing. I don't know what happened there. I, that was kind of messed up. But I hope you liked this review, everybody. Until next time, please. To Camera Leach. Let's see. Where's the get, 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 get. All right. Take care, everybody.